Hello and welcome to a new episode of One Quarter a Week. This is Andre Tonelli and today is an early morning edition of this series, at least for me, not for you because you'll be able to watch it whenever you want. But today's chord, again, after last week, I thought I'd give you another one of my all-time favorite chords. It's just a beautiful sounding chord, maybe a bit more difficult to play than some, but certainly manageable, and I'll help you out along the way. The minor at nine chord has to have one of the most beautiful sounds in music. And uh, it has both the sweetness and air of a sus2 chord, and at the same time, it has the gravitas of a minor chord. And it's just a beautiful sound when put together, as we'll see shortly. As far as uses, it's pretty much used everywhere because it is uh, a result of harmonizing the major or minor scale in uh, ninth, so it's pretty easy to do, as we'll see later, and so you'll find it pretty much everywhere. In pop, you'll find it in rock music, you'll find it in classical music, and you'll find this often implied by maybe having a regular minor chord in the rhythm section, but then stressing the sound of the ninth on top of it. So, before we begin, as always, let's check out how we build it. As the name implies, the minor add 9 chord is a minor chord with an extra ninth. Not to be confused, as you remember, we talked about before in this series, with other kinds of ninth chords. For example, it's not a minor ninth, it's not a ninth, certainly not a major ninth. Okay, so this is a chord that is a minor chord plus a second. And in the case of C, as you know, I always teach you these chords in C, we have, of course, the root, which will be C, no surprise there. From there we'll build a basic minor triad, okay, because that's kind of the mother sound of this chord. So we have C in the root, we have E flat in the minor third, and then we have G as the perfect fifth. So no surprises here. All we have to do now is on top of this minor triad, we have to add a ninth, and the ninth, in the case of this chord, is a major ninth, and it's one whole step above the root. So if my root is C, one whole step above, it's a D, and so when you put it all together, you have your minor triad plus the ninth. It's a great chord, and uh, let's dive deeper into the sound. It's incredibly beautiful, and there's not much to say actually about this score. This will be a pretty short video, because if you've done your homework with previous videos, there's really not much to add here. The main thing is, of course, comparing it to the sus2 chord or the major at ninth chord. Here's a link for the major at ninth. You should watch these videos together. And just the same as it happened with the major at nine, the minor at nine is basically a minor chord, but it adds that extra edge, and that edge comes in the shape of the D. The major second, or the ninth, is um, a very strange sound because it adds a bit of tension, but at the same time, it kind of opens up the chord, so you don't quite know exactly what it means, right? It's not as minor as minor, but it's not happier either. It's just very atmospheric and uh, kind of full of possibilities. You can decide where to take it. It depends a lot on what comes before or comes after. It depends on what you play on top of it, you know, what you layer on it. So it's certainly a very interesting sound. Uh, compared to the sus2 chord, the sus2 chord was very open and actually bright, but now we have more information than that. We also have this note here, we have the minor third, and that really brings down the happiness, so to speak, of the sus2, right? It brings it down to the real world. I think it's a beautiful chord, so whereas the sus2 was like this, now we add this note, and everything changes, right? And so that's how I would look at the minor at ninth chord. There's not a lot of theory behind it. It's not like you have to learn new functions or harmonic uh, structures. It's just what it is. It's a minor chord with an at ninth. Uh, as far as its uses go, I do, I do want to warn you about a little thing. You can't just pop it in anywhere. None of these chords you can pop in anywhere. So don't just go randomly placing it in, instead of you know minor chords. There are some rules. It's very simple. Make sure that the ninth which is a major second, is permitted by your, by your uh, key. So let me just give you a straight example. If you are in the key of C major, right? You have C major in the one chord, 
And then the two and three chords, D and E, are minor. They're both minor. So in C major, the first chord is C major, the second chord is D minor, the third chord is E minor, right? Then it continues, but we'll stick with these three. So if I want to play this chord instead of the regular D minor and E minor, I have to be careful because I have to make sure that the ninth or the major second of each chord is permitted. What does that mean? That means that if I'm in D, I have a D minor here, and I want to add the ninth, I have to make sure that this ninth is part of the key. In the case of D minor, it's true, because I have D, this is my fifth, and here's my ninth, which is an E. Perfect, all right, I can use it. But the next chord, which is E minor, I can't play the add nine, because the major second of E is an F sharp, and that's not permitted in the key of C. Right, so in this case, you, I could only use it on the second or, you know, other chords that fit, like the sixth, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Right, so all this just to say that if you want to use a specific chord in a progression and you want to stay within the key, you might not care about that, that's fine, but if you want to stay within the key, then you have to make sure that the notes that you add or that you modify in the new chord are still in agreement with the mother scale or the key, in this case C major, all right? So don't just go popping chords everywhere. Make sure you're, you're you know, aware of the effect that these modifications or add-ons to the chords have on the key. So now let me give you three positions for the minor at ninth chord. The first one is a bit difficult to play, but it is worth it. So work on it and it's a beautiful sound. And it's basically a C minor chord with a bit of a stretch here, all right? That's it. So we have the root on the fifth string, third fret, that's our C. Then we have the G below it on the fifth fret. And here comes the stretch, okay? We have to play the, the seventh fret, which is a D on the third string. And then we continue as if it were a regular minor chord. We play this um, E flat, on the fourth fret of the second string. And then we can complete it with another G on the first fret of the first string. And so the whole thing sounds like this. And there you go, so I think it's worth studying it. Uh, the next position is in the same area of the neck. It's a bit easier, it has a different sound, and it starts as an inversion. It starts on the E flat, the minor third, on the sixth fret of the fifth string. And then we play five and five on the fourth and third, and these notes are G and C, so the fifth and the root. And then we save the ninth for last, and we play with the first finger on the third fret of the second string. So we have E flat, G, C, D. Also very beautiful and a bit simpler to play. And for the last one, this is one of my favorite voicings of this chord, and it's way up here on the 8th and 10th fret, and uh, it's a bit brighter. I love to play it in other keys, you know, lower on the neck, but it goes like this. We have the root on the 10th fret of the fourth string. This is a C. And then we play with a little bar here. We play the eighth fret on the third and second string, and that gives us an E flat, which is the minor third, and the G, which is the fifth. And then, of course, we must complete it with the ninth, which we play with the little finger on the 10th fret of the first string. And there you go, three positions. Of course, as always, look up many more. It's, this chord is really worth it. As far as scales are concerned, there are quite a few that work with this chord because it's simply a minor chord with a major second. So any scale that fits that bill will work. So as long as you have a root, a minor third, a perfect fifth, and a major second, you'll be good to go. Some scales, though, won't work because maybe the second is not major, like the Phrygian scale. The Phrygian scale has a minor second, so that's out of the question for this chord. That's why beforehand we couldn't play the E minor at 9, but we could play the D minor at 9, right? So you always have to be careful and mindful of the harmonic context in which you're placing these scales. 
if you want to play a scale that doesn't fit the chord, then by all means go ahead. But usually what you're trying to do is stay within a key or within a modulation. And so you do have to be mindful of where you're at harmonically before you start playing scales over the chords. And then if the chords change, you know, then you might have to adjust. So it's something you should keep in mind. It is beyond the scope of these videos, which are on chords, but you know, it's a bit of advice. So as far as scales go, there are many. I would just suggest you start with two of them. First of all, the minor scale, the regular minor scale, simply because just as the chord, the ninth adds a lot of character to a regular minor chord. Better with the volume up. See, just as, the, as that D adds a lot of character to the C minor, that character spills over to the scale when you play on top of it with the regular minor scale. So over this chord, you should practice, maybe make a loop of this chord and play minor. And you'll see quite a bit of character get added to the regular minor phrases that you might use. So it's a beautiful sound. The other scale I would suggest you look at, and there are so many, but one of them is the melodic minor scale, which is a bit of a strange scale. We did talk about it a few times here in the series, and it's a minor scale with the second half from the major scale. So it has a raised sixth and a raised seventh. Strange sounding, but when you mix it up with this chord, then you get a strange mix of a very minor sounding chord and a brighter scale. Okay, it sounds a bit off when I play the chord and then the scale, but I suggest you, again, you know, build a little rhythm track with one of these chords and try the melodic minor. It's a bit harder to manage, but it has some interesting results. And there it is, the minor add ninth chord. I think it's a beautiful chord, and I do expect that sometimes I talk about a chord like it's the end of the world, and then you go like, meh, you know, and some other times I might just be like, okay, here's a chord you should use, but I don't feel that it's the most beautiful sounding one, and maybe that's your favorite chord. So if that's the case, please let me know in the comments. I would really like to hear what you think of each of these chords, if it's not too much to ask. And if you enjoyed this series, uh, please maybe consider subscribing, because it really helps me out. Maybe spread the word with your friends or fellow guitar players that will really help out and maybe benefit them as well, which is kind of the point behind this series. And uh, I will see you next week. I'll think of something maybe a bit more obscure for next week so that you can learn something new. All right. I will see you very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.